projects about that. This was the project of the damping controller. So uh, we do a lot of this prototyping in, in, in Labview. Uh, this is not fac it, is, it was for faculty, but I have documented some of my teaching experience. But uh, I don't think I should stop now, right? Yeah. We have some questions for Louis. Professor Karani has a, uh, a rule <coughs> that we must have at least one student question, otherwise, we can't leave the room. So we definitely need a student question. Do you guys know what GitHub is? How many of you guys know? Raise your hand. You have heard of GitHub? Have you used? Yeah. yeah. How many was it? Ten? You want to count it? You want to count it? Five, <laughs> six, eight. So share, share some experience about your kind of open source, because you, I know as we talked before before that, yeah. you are the co-chair of the IEEE open source software. So how's your experience, and how is your experience to switch away from this, and what's your perspective in the future? And the, the future depends on you. I cannot do anything anymore. I'm a professor. <laughs> I mean, my, my point of view is that uh, I don't want to build the same model into it. When I, every time that I have a student, they have to do things from scratch and again and again and again. And we waste so much time doing that, and I'm tired. So that's why I'm releasing everything I have. There's not a good way of doing research for can't compete against the other countries if we keep doing this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's my point of view. It's a practical point of view, but it's also, it's important in the long term that you have some uh, 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 source code uh, banks where you can do things. That's what the people in physics and mathematics do. That's why they are able to evolve. So that's. What do I think about the open source approach and things like that? Well, it works with the right people. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, we are behind the computer engineering, computer science community in their approach to do things. So the first responsible to, to adopt some of that approach is people like me that are trying to be professors and know about it. Uh, otherwise, it's quite hopeless because we're power engineering. So it's, uh, it's very hard, conservative field. So. I mean, but for me, I'm a kid from Guatemala, you know? I'm losing nothing. Every extra day that I'm alive is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a question for you. In that part where you've done some testing on protection along with um, your uh, simulation engine running, so is the protection uh, uh, model as uh, is a, is a hardware in the loop, or have you modeled it within your uh, simulation code itself? We, we, ha we do. Also for the controls, there is uh, three steps in the Model V design process. One is just simulation. Then you have software, uh, something S, uh, uh, SIL, software in the loop. So what you do is that you implement uh, the, the code of the protection relay or the controller. And uh, in another box, you have the, in another simulator, you have the power system. And you interface them via communication or via analog channel. So that's the first step. The third step is to do the hardware implementation. Now, the problem that we have in, power, in all of these things is that to go from the software, which would be in the case depends on your platform, which is MATLAB Simulator, but our hardware is in National Instruments. So we have to go and re-implement the same code. So we also don't have the same for controller because there are limitations of the representing certain parts in the FPGA. So actually, this is a problem that is not only us having, but they also have it in the automotive industry, for example. And it's, it's part of these problems with cyber physical systems that you want to be able to go from your design through each of the steps until the deployment, having the same, uh, some sort of granularity so that you can actually check that what you're implementing is correct. So uh, we have done both of these things, but um, for the protection, we have worked mostly with the relays because uh, it's not that hard to work with protection, actually. It's quite a piece of cake. Control is, uh, is a nightmare. Uh, you, protection, you have to trip stuff. Control, you have to have a signal or the time coming in. Right. No student questions? 
Louis, you, uh, you mentioned a lot on uh, analysis. Uh, for example, you show the blackout and uh, do some kind of analysis, and uh, we yeah. all do that. And uh, also, there's analysis of uh, should we trip a line out? What would happen if you do that? And, yeah. and so forth. But um, is it, it, do you think that the future is in direct digital control in, in this software business? In other words, uh, in the next 50 years, that uh, uh, the, the interconnected power system will start to look more like uh, the interconnected telephone system, where in uh, 1910, let's say, uh, to make a, a long distance phone call was very complicated and all manual operations. And, uh, but now, uh, I'm sure virtually everybody in the room has, has a phone that you can call some strange place across the world you know, uh, and costs almost nothing. Uh, so uh, it's a terrific change in maybe 60 years. Yeah. Uh, it's, are we shooting to uh, direct digital control and elimination of operators? The operator. Yeah, that was the, the question that I had, right? How, how do the operators maintain their sort of role? When I started saying that Facebook can do it. Google could do this job. I am 100% sure. If the Google goes to uh, to Versailles in RT and tells them we buy all of your software, Google could run the power system because and buy all the knowledge. It's not it's not difficult, but I I think we're too far ahead for direct control in my lifetime. The simple reason is because when I actually have to deal with some of this equipment of the manufacturers and try to upgrade the firmware, it's a nightmare. So, as I said, we can have these visions of the future, but we need the technology, the core, the building blocks to also move. So that's why we have seen so, even though there has been so much money into the synchrophaser business, it doesn't move because the core, the building blocks, are not accessible to the people to do the job. It's the same thing with modeling and simulation for us. We're locked in into these environments. So we need the tools to do a good job. And I spent my first few years paying a lot of attention to how I keep that under some sort of, uh, that is not lo I'm not locked out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't do very much otherwise because you, you have to marry a vendor and that's that's no way of creating competition. So hopefully these things that we that I develop, my long term goal is to create tools that people can use and uh, create competition. Only we can create competition in this industry can we expect for something better. Otherwise, I, I think uh, if, if Google is uh, smart enough, they could run the power system. But the things you're showing mainly are uh, uh, analysis type. Uh, Prediction, tools. yeah, because I didn't have time to go into the measurement part. I okay, you too did much. show some slides that said the word control, but I'm not yeah. so sure. Uh, that starts to get a bit scary then, because uh, you'll have the machine uh, doing everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. So imagine, I mean, it's pretty boring uh, when I've been in the control room in, in Norway for two hours sitting there, nothing happened, you know? Two hours. So I think it's pretty boring. I think human in, uh, creativity is best invested in developing the algorithms that you need for things to run well. But during a blackout, I get, it might get pretty exciting in the control room. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. I don't, you out, probably. I don't know. You know I, otherwise, they will uh, tell this my fault. But there's no, no student question? We have a, a, not a student question, but a question. Um, so I didn't hear you talk too much about security. Um, so how is it going to be in the future? As you move to more open and uh, competing technologies, does that impact what might happen on the security side? What kind of security? Physical security or cyber security? Uh, well, with cybersecurity, I think it's uh, a little bit challenging because we're starting now to understand the implications of it. So, uh, a lot of the work that we did on synchrophasers was done incorrectly, let's say, from the point of view of a security analyst, because we didn't implement security from the beginning uh, for synchrophaser data transfer. But remember, that was done in the 90s where there was not much considerations about it, but now we have IC 61 and 50 that has security introduced in it, so I think it would be pretty much better. So I think that's a matter of understanding, and also, I mean, 
it's difficult to talk in the same language with some people. I think that's a, a main challenge. Uh, the most important thing when you come into security, so if you're going to put a security fabric in the middle of everything, the most important thing is to think about the performance of applications and what you're going to be able to do and assessing that your, your encryption and all of these things are not going to get in the way of getting the job done. Otherwise, what's the big deal? Because digital television requires way more performance than the little data that we're putting through. I don't think it's a big challenge. It's just that how do you expect these guys to, work, to do anything when they're working with a SCADA system that requires a, a what is it called? Vax machines. Fax machines, okay? So when I say that we're cavemen, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. That, that, it's hard to answer that question, but there's a ways to deal with it. Or, it certainly seems like a negative if all of the software is open source, that uh, even the bad guys will know how to change it and, and screw it up. But there's a principle that security by obscurity never works, so... The, I don't know. Yeah. No, it's... it's <laughs> So you think that, uh, for example, when we send messages to our embassy in some place, uh, we should send it just open source? Uh, just mm, no. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, I think uh, when, when you look at for security, actually, you have a, Linux distributions are the ones used for a security requirements. So depends how you how you think about these things. I I don't think uh, when we do research. There's nothing there that is really of a concern, but uh, I think in the way that the companies operate, then they have to really think about this more from from the beginning, more or less. Uh, and that's different because it has changed so recently. So I think it's very difficult. I, I can't really answer these kind of questions. I don't think anybody can. Another quick question. Finally. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys handle documentation of your models? Because what, what I've found is that you, you were talking about how part of the reason for the open source thing is that you're tired of having your students waste so much time yeah. rebuilding something that was already done. Yeah. What I find is sometimes when I get to working with a model, the amount of time that it's going to take me to understand what somebody else did, in half mm -hmm. the time I can build my own version mm -hmm. and it won't be quite as efficient, but it'll get me to the next yeah. step, which is what is actually mm -hmm. interesting to me. So how are you just using get, the get. logs? Or Git. Yeah. So are you just is it just the logs in Git or do you have documentation is embedded in some of this uh, it, it, well it's embedded in the code. I could show you how it looks like uh, but I would need to open it. I'll show you later if you want to. But it's embedded in the code within the HTML feature of Modelica, so each model is documented within it. And a lot of the Modelica code is self-explanatory because it's the differential equations itself. So uh, it's not that hard. So, it, 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 but you wish, uh, the, better, the best thing is that you can use the, the Git so you can trace all the changes and initial things. It's difficult. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. I went over too much, eh? No, good, good.